Hello everyone, this is Rokas of Aikido Shule, and uh, today I'm uh, going to answer to a request of a video which was made a while ago. The topic is quite unique but very important to everyone. So it's Aikido in relationships, uh, meaning relationships, you can apply it to relationships with other people, but mainly we're going to look at a personal intimate relationship with a partner, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, a very important topic very big one, many people struggle with it, and uh, what, uh, speaking generally about that, one of the things I noticed is that if our uh, relationship, intimate relationship life suffers, meaning we're at a point of low with our girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, with our partner, uh, the whole rest of the life also go, goes down to a low, so meaning the way, the, our ability to perform Form in our life, our ability to fulfill our purpose, to feel balance, actually depends a lot on our on our relationship, on how we support each other. And if we are not having a good time there, the rest of the life won't be good either. So it's very important to keep that balance between those two. But what I also noticed is that we're not really taught to have good relationships. Maybe it's becoming bigger and more more emphasized. Uh, not so much in our country, but uh, it's getting there too. But nonetheless, I feel many of us just don't know how to be good husbands, good wives, good partners. But when you look at Aikido, it's all about partner work. There's a lot of partnership. And uh, m those who know, you know me uh, from before, you probably know that for me, bringing what's on the mat, off the mat to home is very, very important. And I always look for those connection points. So definitely, there are definitely connection points for a relationship too and please do note I of, of course I'm not a relationships expert but uh, I did invest a lot of my thoughts a lot of my energy into making uh, my relationship with my wife uh, to make it good and harmonized and uh, I did my best to include Aikido in that and there are certain revelations certain certain things I discovered which helped me which work to support that relationship so I will share those today First connection with uh, intimate relationships, uh, partnership with uh, Aikido is that conflicts are normal. As human beings, we have a tendency to avoid conflict. We, we don't really like conflict. We don't like feeling uncomfortable and conflict feels, makes us feel uncomfortable. So we oftentimes just avoid it. We either stay quiet or, and let it go through if we're peaceful. Uh, or we just wait, 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 and then we explode, and those things don't work. But uh, many times when there's conflict in a relationship, we feel like something is wrong, and probably there's something which needs to come back to balance, but it doesn't mean the relationship is not working, it doesn't mean it's bad. A relationship doesn't have to be perfect in the sense of not having any conflicts. Conflicts are just the system trying to find balance. And I feel that Aikido acknowledges that. In Aikido, Aikido is not about ignoring conflicts, ignoring difficulties. Aikido is about solving conflict, transforming conflict. We are learning to deal with conflict. So why not bring that to uh, our everyday home life? So first of all, my advice is, uh, what helps me is to realize conflicts are normal. If there is a conflict, it doesn't mean putting a, a tick Bad marriage, need to separate. No, uh, it just means we need to go into it. Now, when you go into it, there are different ways you can do that. And also, if you can easily connect it with your Aikido practice, it also depends on the school. So my second point is that there are different Aikido schools. Some, uh, some can be pretty hard and actually emphasize adding stuff into the conflict. Some will speak about transforming it. Some will be just technical. So what I will say is actually based a lot on what I'm inspired about in Aikido, and I see what's very powerful in Aikido, but it doesn't mean all schools will work on the same level. So I hope you will find the connection points for you, but please note that uh, different schools might offer you different things. So in, in our school, in Aikido Shule, in Dojo, I'm using a certain model, which I'm going to talk about a lot through this year. So here's a picture of the model. Uh, it's probably hard to understand everything just by looking at it. I will explain uh, about it uh, more and more for this year. But in this model, uh, there are three states. There's the zero, the one, and the one and a half. So the zero is the listening, the stopping. Uh, the one is acting as a response, uh, responding to the situation. And one and a half is being, uh, 
active or proactive. It's actually taking initiative. So why this is important and why this helps? So the zero point and my, my third, uh, third accent for today, the understanding that everyone has different needs. So you probably, it's becoming a common notion and common understanding that men and women already think differently, speaking about uh, different sex relationships, but all people in general have different ways of understanding the world. And first of all, understanding that men and women think differently and that if a woman says one thing, a man can understand it very differently and vice versa, but also as human beings, we have different needs. And where this connects with Aikido is that each uke is unique too. And in Aikido, on a mat, if it's a healthy dojo, it's important to respect that. You know, if somebody's older, you will go slower. If somebody's injured, if somebody's taller, you will have to bring the person down. If somebody's shorter, you will have to go down. Every uke is different and you cannot use the same for all method. Uh, so take that lesson and bring it back to home. When you talk with your, with your partner, when you're uh, looking at ways to um, make the relationship better, don't try to take one rule and apply it to everyone. If you had, if something worked with another relationship, it doesn't mean it's going to work with this relationship. If you want something the partner to give, it doesn't mean that the partner will want the same things. Me and my wife, we read a lot, uh, quite a few books about relationships, but our favorite one must be The Five Different Languages of Love. I recommend it really to those who are interested in, in making the relationship healthier, better, uh, more prosperous. I won't go too much into detail to, to save your time, but the author, Gary Chapman, finds five different needs, which I really feel it's true. Based on my experience, it's definitely true that we all have uh, one of the five different needs and very rarely we will have the same need with a partner. Uh, but the tendency is that if what my need is, I want that need to be normally, I express it to another person. Let's say it's physical touch, it's one of the needs. If I perceive being loved by being massaged, touched, kissed, uh, hugged, uh, then I will go and hug my person and kiss my partner and etc. etc. to express love. But if the partner's uh, language love is not that, it won't make a big difference. I will put a lot of energy into that, but my partner will not become much happier because of that, because the partner's need is a different need. Let's say uh, acts of service, it's another love language. And let's say if I wash the dishes, you know, if my wife washes the dishes, it doesn't, doesn't mean much to me. If she cleans the home, I'm happy, but it doesn't make me feel more loved. But for her, it can, be, it can mean the whole world. So understanding that we have different needs uh, the same way as on the mat on Aikido uh, is a very important step. And that leads to the next step, which I call listening and acting. So as I mentioned, this, the Aikido model that I apply these days, the zero is listening into the needs, understanding what needs uh, are of my partner. Maybe you'll need to read a book about that. Maybe you'll need to do a test. There's a test for that. Maybe you'll just need to ask or observe if the partner cannot express it clearly uh, on his own. And then when you, when you figure it out, then comes the one. Uh, let's say if the partner asks you to take out the trash and you don't like that and you don't perceive that as a love language, if you like, it's just a chore, it's going to be hard to do that. But if you're listening in, and this, if you're in the zero state, you're listening and understanding, wow, acts of service is the language love of my partner. The partner asks you to take out the trash, you realize, wow, my partner wants me to express my love. And then the one acting as a response, responding to that, you'll do it, maybe not necessarily super happily, but you'll have much more motivation to do that when you realize, I'll take out the trash and then my partner will feel more loved. Uh, because that's a very important point in relationships. It's actually a bit similar to, again, Aikido on the mat. You have to listen into the situation. You have to feel where the partner resists, where the partner wants to go with you, uh, what's the difference of the height, weight, and you have to adapt and respond to a unique situation, a unique uh, scenario. Like also in Randori, you cannot plan everything out. You have to respond in the moment. So you have to do the same in a relationship. You have to be ready and open and, uh, and perceptive of what your partner wants and actually to be able to respond to it, to be also to leave some space to respond for that, to not occupy yourself with only all your own stuff, but be ready to respond to the partner. And then there's the one and a half part, the being proactive. 
So if you have a good zero, if you're a good listener and you're sensitive, you understand what your partner needs, then you can choose to spend, let's say, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or an hour per day to do that act of serve, act, act of love. You know, massage your partner, take out the trash, buy a gift, make a surprise, depends on what the partner appreciates. And then you become more proactive, uh, which I feel in Aikido it's important too. You cannot just be receptive and just wait to be attacked. Uh, speaking on uh, martial arts terms, if you, if you are walking with a friend and your friend gets attacked, care for the friend, you want to protect the friend, uh, you, you won't be just standing there and saying, hit me, hit me, you know, I need an attack, grab me. Uh, you have to be uh, ready in Aikido to be proactive too. You have to step in and say, okay, what the hell are we doing here? Do we really want to fight? Or you might even have to have a physical intervention. Intervention. You have to. You might need to go in, grab the person, and, and then talk and say, do we really want to do this? So you have to be, in Aikido, you have to be ready to be proactive. And the same quality applies to, um, to your relationship. Uh, in my experience, a relationship will not be great by putting, by not being proactive, by not putting any effort. Most people think, oh, if my partner is ideal, everything will just flow. I never met a couple which is ideal, I th and it doesn't need to be so. It's important to be ready to put some energy into it, to, to go into the conflicts, to go into the situation, to respond to it, and sometimes to take a step forward to do an act of service, to, to express your love through the, uh, through the language which the partner understands. So in all in all, to summarize, uh, these things are very important. Uh, these are the basics, the main things, which when I apply, really benefits and helps our relationship flourish and vice versa. In my experience, it's very true and I already spoke with a lot of different people who have the same experience. So I encourage you to try that, to bring those lessons you have on Aikido Mat and express it in your relationship life. And, uh, and yeah, just remember, so there's the zero, the listening. Uh, if you're going to apply the wrong action at the wrong time, it's not going to work. And you will feel exhausted because you put so much energy, but if it's the wrong place, forget about it. It's like doing a bad technique. If you keep on doing the technique in a wrong way, let's say in Nikkyo, you're not making the right angles, you'll put a lot of energy but it's not gonna work efficiently. If you do it well, if you do it at the right place at the right time, you need just a bit of energy and the effects are really big. So the same here, but first of all, you have to be receptive. You have to listen into it, understand the needs of the partner, respond to the needs when the, when the partner asks you to. So in Aikido terms, respond to the attack when it comes. Don't project too much, don't think about it too much, but be available. And the first step, the one and a half, be proactive. Ask yourself, based on the zero, based on the one, ask yourself, okay, what can I do on my own? How can I show my partner that I cherish the partner? How can I make a surprise? How can I make this relationship better? Not based on my projections, but based on what is. So again, I really hope uh, these tips help. There's a lot of different material about that. You can read the book. I'm sure there's videos about that on the video, but I haven't seen one uh, done through the perspective of Aikido, so that might uh, help the Aikidokas, also might help everyone. So if you feel this video can help somebody, feel free to share it. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want a continuation of this video, going more deeper into the subject, please let me know. I'm always open to requests. And yeah, I'm happy we had the chance to spend these 15 minutes together. And if a partner is not happy, won't be happy about your Aikido practice. If the partner is happy, we'll support your Aikido practice. And that's a good point. <laughs> but this is a bit dark humor. Anyway, as always, it's been focus, and I'll see you on the virtual mat again soon.